All right, disclaimer, this video's negative tone is not a reflection of any actual negative feelings towards game theory. It's mostly just comedic exaggeration, so just kind of have fun with it and listen to the actual critiques and not just dismiss it as, oh, I'm just hating because I really hate MatPat personally with a burning passion. Okay, so I'm going to use the latest game theory as a main reference point as the current state of the robot kid interpretation rather than going over its entire history one of the things i noticed with the video is how it completely misunderstood patient 46 having a family it seems like the theorist team completely focused on the ggy short story to see this point rather than noting how the therapists talk about patient 46 in the original therapy tapes it's uncovered through these therapy tapes that is this big reveal and secret that 46 has been hiding that they didn't have an awful family like they've been claiming but they had a great one and this is the final reveal of the tapes. So this is what gets the final therapist killed. So it's heavily implied based on the context that this is true in some way. Because otherwise, why would the therapist be killed over this? And if they had a great family, it's really hard to attach them to any prior character as the robot kid theory has been presented. So you'd have to work in some situation where this family adopts a robot kid, they stick around for a while, the robot kid's never noticed as not aging at all, and then something happens to them to lead 46 slash Gregory to be in security breach, which no real theories have really handled. They often just treat it as he's created and taken straight into security breach. In FNAF VR, we're shown through Jeremy that the anomaly slash glitch trap can try to hack human minds. And through the opening crawl game, we're shown that the VR experience is subject and at risk of digital consciousness transfer. And that pays off at the end of the game when seemingly Vanny slash Vanessa is taken over by glitch trap. And this continues in FNAF AR when Ness searches up how to induce compliance in human subjects. Not only is the sentence plural implying that the AR cast currently has at least two people being controlled by glitch trap, but that both are human. And the same comment pays off when Vanessa notes that she keeps trying to seal Glistrap away, even though it doesn't seem to be working, which explains why Glistrap was trying to find a way to take more control over her and patient 46 in the first place. This is a consistent through line and plot line that doesn't require Gregory to be a robot at all, and outright contradicts the implications in the first place, especially since we know that Glitchtrap can canonically just control machines just by touching a monitor in their proximity. And hell, when Freddy runs out of power, he seems to be reverted to being under the control of Glitchtrap, implying that as long as the safe mode kind of protection barrier isn't active, he can control kind of any machinery in the Pizzaplex. So Gregory being a robot raises the question of why doesn't he have control over Gregory if he is a robot? And there's just no end game to that story, really. Oh, we faked out the audience. They thought Patient 46 had a tragic past, but actually they were lying and had great parents. But actually, they're Gregory who's the main character. And also, Gregory's a robot. It also doesn't help that nothing that's been used to imply that Gregory's a robot is really present in the Silver Eyes, where the robot kid premise comes from. Charlie sees illusions through the illusion disc the same as everyone else. She bleeds. She eats. She doesn't have a jarring robot pause when thinking, which is something the map had specifically pointed out in GGY, which is also not even really a thing in GGY. It's kind of noted that he's always in an intense thought, which, yeah, we'll get into a little bit, but point is, it's not a provable parallel if you make up a new criteria in the theory for Gregory to match, even though that was never something that happened to the humanoid realistic robot kids originally in the first place. It's not even including the fact that it's not even really a parallel at this point. It's just borrowing the robot kid premise and applying it haphazardly wherever it could fit. And I say haphazardly because while Gregory has been the main focus of this, the oops all Elizabeth theory is just swapping it over and fitting it with Vanessa and Elizabeth. But now that that seems to be debunked with GGY, it's just reverted back to Gregory. The closest thing in the Silver Eyes to what Henry having a robot kid would be that is male would be Sammy. And if you follow that logic, that means during the FNAF 6 fire, Henry had already built Gregory, already put the wall code in what will become the Pizza Plex's sister location room, and to basically psychically knew about the Phaser Blast and Monty Golf cameras and that they'd be used to defeat corrupt animatronics controlled by Glitchtrap and a bunny lady, and that this kid was kind of destined or set to destroy and defeat them all. That's not really a parallel to any of the Silver Eyes plot beats at all, or really even the Tales books. That's not something that Edwin, the Henry parallel, supposedly under this theory, did. And I want to explain, the parallel theory used to make some level of sense for Silver Eyes. During the Sister Location and Pizza Race and Lair story arcs, there were moments that were kind of similar things that happened in the novel trilogy. So connecting those and connecting characters there, I personally don't view it that way, but that made some level of sense. 
But now we're arguing a completely different game. Not to mention, if Henry had the ability to make robot kids, that kind of contradicts this whole, like, I want to let the past burn and have it be all forgotten. And also, it raises the question of why didn't he just build a robot recreation of Charlie? Why did he make it a small little boy? And if his whole goal is to stop any future problems, once again, why a small little boy? Why not, like, an adult? Why not, like, make a robot replica of Michael to do it all or something like that? Not to mention, if you cut out Killer Brides, there's no precedent for the robot kids at all. Every example in Frights or Tales just isn't this same argument or theory. And once you consider the mimic lore, basically all of the argument that was prior being used irrespective of Silver Eyes is kind of being put through the shredder over time. Our AI gaining sentience as thrown through the post-it room is the Mimic, or at least a character very similar to the Mimic. Freddy's comment about Gregory looking different when he has Roxy's eyes would apply to anyone. Since he can see through walls now, it would always look to him like someone looks different. He would see their guts, innards, their nervous system, blood and all that. The vanity filter would be weird if it were the only time in the games this happens, but it isn't. In Phazerplast, you get a subtle CRT overlay, and with Moon, you also get this overlay. So it shows that Security Breach uses visual effects to represent different gameplay scenarios. With Moon, you're just waiting until he either kills you or you can get to a recharge station. And I think the Vanity Filter is meant to do the same thing. It is meant to imply to you, the player, that she is a much more elevated threat. She's immune to hiding at Freddy. She's immune to being stunned. And I would like to remind people that Charlie sees illusions the same as everyone else. So there's not really an argument that Gregory would see Vanny differently than the other characters. Because if the whole argument is like the quality of the eyes between the two different robots, Gregory being a robot and Freddy and the others being a robot, would it basically exist if he was a human still? His human eyes would be better at detecting physical light and all that rather than digital processors anyway. Is it weird that it's a CRT? Yeah. But it's also weird that he gets a CRT filter and phasroplast in the first place. It's also weird that he sees magic stars and stuff as Moon is around, so I think it's just a gameplay thing. Or at least there's heavy precedent for it to be a gameplay thing. And the whole Gregory has robotic expressions and all is almost completely null and void because that isn't how he talks in Security Breach, so it's very easy to chalk that up to a glitch trap control exclusive trait. That kind of leaves only two points of notice, which are the Your Broken line and the wall code. The latter of which just doesn't fit with MatPat's interpretations when you follow the logic. The Your Broken line is subject to a lot of interpretation. Freddy's character is just in general pretty robotic in his thought process and explanation of things. In fact, you can notice that he almost never uses contractions and generally thinks in the way that a robot would, meaning this easily just could be a quirk of how his processor thinks. Not to mention, there is the whole censorship argument, but that's kind of always been weird. Like I said before, unless Henry's psychic, there's no explanation for how he would predict all this. This theory implies that Gregory of his own volition is being commanded or implied by Henry to go get the parts like the Phaser Blast, like he's being sent on some mission by Henry to do it all. This ignores the fact that it's Freddy who says to get these weapons to stun animatronics. It also ignores a character who has a lot more connections to that room, someone who knows and wants to get rid of the trap, someone who wants help but couldn't get it themselves, and someone who knew Gregory enough to leave a message like this, or knows that there are people like Gregory who exist who could see this message. Vanessa. If you follow the lines of the poem, you can match it all directly to Vanessa. Tape Girl broke Glitch Trap into pieces, but Vanessa mended them. She built Glitch Trap back up. She is the reason he's around. She built the breath. Plus, built might very well be literal given the fact that Burn Trap has multiple parts that really shouldn't belong to the original Mimic and look a lot more at home on the Glam Rocks. This combined with Freddy mentioning how he's been down there before when she took me down there implies that Vanny has a large part in the role that leads to Burn Trap existing as it is. In fact, you might even say she put it back together. This led to the corrupted Glam Rocks, hunting people through Glitch Trap desires. None of the Glitch Trap or the Glam Rocks are real, but they are drawn to life especially with the Glitch Trap Mimic parallel set up in the Tales books. Drawn to life, but not real. It is meant to copy things, to look for things. And the final lines are a request from her to save those with soul, like her, trapped, as we see in the Princess Quest ending. And that's just my personal take, because I think it fits fairly well. And you could also easily make a case for a character like Edwin being the one who's writing the whole wall code. Not only does he write in a triangular symbol subset, but he also creates the Mimic, which is building the breath. The Mimic is drawn to life. 
and he's just kind of generally calling out for help for people to solve his problem, the thing that he made. Save those with soul, leaving them behind clues of what to do for anyone to survive the generic endos and glam rocks and all that. However, that inherently hinges on Edwin being in the game continuity, and also he has no direct connections to the room itself. That said, what about Edwin is different than when Henry was introduced in the Silver Eyes trilogy? Sure, he repeats a lot of character arcs at moments, but if characters from the original book trilogy can come into the games, what's different about Edwin that makes it so he has to be a character that only exists to be a parallel to Henry? And let's say he has to be. Let's say the theorist team is 100% right that Henry and Edwin are basically the same character in two different continuities. Why can't the mimic just be a new thing? If all that needs to come out of the original novel trilogy is robot kids existing. Why can't the idea of an animatronic or AI trying to replicate people come out of the short stories? Why is one technology have more precedent or have to exist when another is dismissed as being a prior existing thing or something like that? Why can't we just say, oh, Henry built this animatronic that's basically 99% the mimic from Tails in the game continuity? And I think we can even take the narrative through line of Gregory even further. Since the therapist note that 46 had great parents, we can assume that he doesn't anymore, which raises the question, what happened to his parents? What happened to his family? And since GGY is noted as killing multiple therapists, then I don't assume it's a stretch at all to assume that Glitchart might have had Gregory kill his own parents to increase his authority over him. If he has parents, they can snap him out of it or pull him away from things. They can notice his behavior is off. They would be the first people to notice his behaviors off, which explains why he's seemingly homeless in the runaway ending. Now, based on the Mega Theory collab stream, it seems like there's a collective sentiment from a lot of the theorist team and the theorists in general on that whole section that the books are of major importance lately, coming out very quickly with a lot to digest and a lot to keep up with. And in the latest video, there's two things that point out this is becoming an increasing problem. There's an acknowledgement of Stitch Line, the theory that the Frights verse, or more specifically the stories intertwined with the Stitch Wraith, and as well as the Tales verse in general, are tied into the game continuity directly. They are events that happen in the universe of the games. And this is just kind of brushed aside and never talked about. This doesn't go anywhere in the video. This is also combined with an objective error. In the story of the Mimic, Edwin's noted as creating a yellow chick head for one of the animatronics. And it's later noted in the story that this is his 18th animatronic. Yet, they kind of try to spin it as a confirmation of Chiki was a separate character being added into the band that they brought up in the Timeline series. Which implies whoever's reading the books in the theorist team are ignoring details or missing details or just skimming through things very quickly without really fully absorbing the stories. And I don't really blame them either for that. This kind of makes me want the theorist team to make a Scott, we need to talk, serious map pad on the couch time, bold green text, FNAF's book problem in the title talking about increasing problem of the questions of the game verse versus the book verse. While the Silver Eyes trilogy is confirmed to be its own thing, this never fully happened with Frights, or Tales for that matter, which is what's causing a lot of these arguments and debates in the first place, because what makes it more frustrating than ever before is that prior to this, prior to the books, a lot of the FNAF theorizing was more about what do we consider things, how do we interpret these small details given there's a lot in a lot of small places. But it was all clear that these things did happen. Maybe there are some things subtly subject to retcon, but for the most part, it was clear that things had to exist with prior things, and those things existed for a fact. But ever since the books came out, there's been this increasing confusion of, what do you even consider? What is just writer fluff? Are they canon at all? Do these events literally happen? Do they not happen? Are they a metaphor? Are they parallels? Are they an adaptation that's in its own verse that follows things very closely, but makes some adjustments? It's a fundamental difference of what information we're taking as fact and isn't. That's not a debate of what information means, it's a debate of what information exists at all. And that is a lot more frustrating and really shouldn't be something that we have to theorize about, at least in my opinion. And I feel like that's a great video idea that is probably best said by game theory. I could say that, and I have said that a few times, but Scott and Skill War aren't going to see my videos or even most theorists' videos. But we know for a fact they see videos from channels like Game Theory. And I think Game Theory is the right type of channel to say this kind of thing. And that would really advance theorizing culture a lot. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, theorist team if you're seeing this at all. And yet, 
rather than try to iron out the details of what we can and can't use, I feel like I'm just watching Game Theory retread the same general ideas and trying to refit them to new ideas presented by the Tales books. Like, I don't get this constant notion that someone has to be a robot kid, which is strange because a few years ago I feel like Game Theory knocked it out of the park with the Cult of Acting Theory. With a few tweaks, I feel like it holds up really well, yet the theory that seems to be consistently brought up and seems to be overriding potential new, more interesting theories that haven't been talked about is the most arbitrary. There is no narrative function for Gregory being a robot other than basically the reveal that he is a robot. It gives him a little bit more of an inherent connection to the events, but not ones that couldn't happen without him being a robot. He doesn't need to be a robot to get any of this payoff. Why not just say, at least for the sake of it, even if you stand by Robot Kids, it's 100% correct, what is the harm in creating a new video that focuses on from another angle? And once again, like I said, I only note this because so many other theories about Security Bridge have been changed and altered by Game Theory as new information comes out, but not Robot Kids. The closest thing to this theory being taken back, or at least looked at from another angle, was Oops All Elizabeth. It just feels kind of out of touch with the past five years of FNAF content focusing on the two years of the Silver Eyes trilogy. And I do mean that. Five years since Robot Kids was introduced, and it's never really made a prominent mainstay in any media since. And I've seen it argue that it had presence, that it has returned, but it actually hasn't the way it was in the Twisted Ones. You have the whole, like, Eleanor's trash people kind of plotline, but that's not creating a robot kid. That is using the Fright BS remnant pendant magic to make someone live if past what they should, for some reason swapping them in and out with trash. That is not the same as, I built a hyper-realistic robot who exists to replace a prior existing dead character or a character who did not exist at all. That is still the same person, their body is just being turned into trash, as silly as that is. You have Lally, who is a child robot, but he's like a character in the Pizzaplex. That's all. You have Nexi, but she's just, once again, kind of just a character. She's not meant to, like, replace a person, really. You do have Steve's fake family, but that's not the same as the robot kids from the Twisted Ones. Those are cruddy robots on illusionary tracks to kind of basically gaslight Steve into making FNAF games. But that is noted as not being this realistic, proper illusion. It is always a terrible illusion all the way through. It's mostly just that Steve is desperate that makes him believe it. It's also one of the only prominent uses of the illusion discs after the original Silver Eyes trilogy. And the closest you get is Animatronic Apocalypse, which is more just an invasion of the Body Snatchers kind of story with FNAF characters. It really doesn't fit to the Robot Kids theory that well, because you still need a pre-existing Gregory to be Body Snatched for this to work, which then raises the question of who was Gregory and all that. But it's still not Gregbot or anything implying that or close to that. Unless you really, really squint to force it to be one. To say, hey, there is a scenario where robots can take the place of a person and take only that and not any of the context behind it. Then yes, you could claim there's presence for robot kids. And something kind of frustrating about this whole thing is that it's actually kind of a hard theory to debunk, not just by us, the audience, but for Steel Wool and Scott. If they were to say this through dialogue, like, Too bad I'm not a robot, I could hide in this place forever! Haha, <laughs> good one, superstar. You would have people stop mid-playthrough and like turn to the camera and laugh and be like, huh, that's kind of a weird call out or joke. And the people will dismiss it like the one line that Freddy's has about like, Vanessa, Bunny, Vanny, as being too obvious or on the nose, and that it's actually just covering up the real conspiracy. And as I said before, since his parents seem to be dead, or missing at the very least, it's really hard to make connections to biological parents in the main ruin plotline, or without them stopping me like, this is a picture of my family, and even then you'd have people like, well maybe it's a fabricated picture of his family or whatever. There's a lot of room for you to kind of perpetuate the robot kid theory. Even official material isn't really safe from this because if you look at the encyclopedia, it listed him as human in the same category as all the other confirmed human characters, and that was brushed off as just another one of the book's many errors, which, to be fair, is a problem of the book itself. And if there's ever another Ultimate Guide or Freddy Files, they're kind of screwed because if they don't acknowledge Gregbot, then they're ignoring one of the biggest theories that came out of the Security Breach era. But if they do, it would be taken as a confirmation. Short of still just saying Gregory's in a robot, 
or having Gregory peel back his skin, there's not really much we can do to confirm that he is or isn't a robot. The story just kind of has to continue, and there's not really an incentive in the plot to reveal this, because, like, if he is a robot, then there is a point. They reveal he's a robot. How do they work that into the plot in the first place? There's no reason in universe for the characters to be like, we need to confirm that Gregory isn't a robot, or anything like that. And hey, if this video ages poorly and Gregory's revealed to be a robot, egg on my face, we can all laugh at this video in retrospect. Still kind of raises a bunch of questions, like, like it becomes really weird of how we should know that some information is a smoking gun that's super important and had to be paid attention to, but lines like the final ending of the secret tapes with that Gregory kills someone over, nah, that was just a kind of thing we should brush aside and not think about too much. But the veiny screen filter? That's super important. And you could argue it the other way around. Why should we dismiss the Vanny filter? But that is an unexplained visual effect that appears a few other times in the game. Whereas the secret tapes are clearly meant to be analyzed and end on a big note. All of this just kind of reminds me of the whole phone guy is purple guy dilemma, where it feels like game theory just stuck onto an idea way longer than I feel it made sense. But even that comparison, it's a little hollow because phone guy is purple guy lasted three videos, whereas Gregbot has existed since Security Breach came out. It has changed, there was Oops All Elizabeth for a little bit, but this has never gone away. And I've gone on this note before, of all theories to cling on to, Patient 46 being a robot, but...